Howdy y'all, this is Stephanie from Apex Languages with another Words of the Week. Last week, we learned about wake and its many meanings, one of which is the name of the county that we live in here in Raleigh. Well, I've got two more words this week and they follow that same uh, theme of cities in our area. Here they are on the map, Apex and Garner. Did you know that those are real relatively common English words? Let's start with apex. Obviously, this is an important word for me to explain, not only because it's a local town, but also because it's the name of my company. Why did I go with apex languages? I'm sure that will become clear enough once I give you the definition, but first, you have to work for it a little bit. Let's practice pronunciation. Repeat after me. Apex, apex, apex. You see here, I have another word in parentheses. This is one of the plural forms. It is possible to say apexes, but uh, it's also worth noting that the more traditional plural form of this word is uh, apices. So repeat that after me, apices, apices apices. So we have apex, apices, apex, apices. Uh, when you change the stress on words, sometimes you get these variations in spelling. Uh, it's plural. That should give you a little bit of a hint. What part of speech is this word? It's a noun. And it comes from Latin. It actually comes straight from Latin. The word was apex in Latin, and that meant tip, the tip of any sort of thing. Um, so the definition that we have today, very similar to the original meaning of the word, is the highest point. Summit, peak, acme, those are a couple of um, uh, synonyms for you. But this, this idea of the highest point, um, very common apex has to do with, for example, the summit of a mountain. So in my sentence, the apex of Mount Chimborazo, although only 6,000 feet above sea level, is the closest point on earth to the sun. And that's why I have a picture of Mount Chimborazo on my, um, on my logo. Now you can use this a little less literally to describe the highest point, the the greatest point of anything. And so in the second sentence, Phil worried he was at the apex of his career and that it would be all downhill from here. All right, so the apex of his career, the highest point, your CEO, your president. After that, you retire. Okay, hopefully. It's good to go out when you're on top, right? So um, that highest point, um and it's basically the best and so when i say apex languages i'm not trying to brag too much but the idea is you're going to get the best uh if you go with apex languages right <laughs> now let's move on to garner repeat with me garner 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 what part of speech is it well this one's a verb no fancy spellings that you need to worry about. No weird pronunciations. It's just a regular verb. Yay. It comes from Latin, although it did enter the language in Middle English, so it's been around longer than Apex has. That's why the spellings changed a bit more. Ultimately, it comes from the word uh, grain, granum. That's what you make your bread from, right? You store grain in a granary. Granarium. And so um, Garner, according to the dictionary, can still mean a, a, a noun that is a store or supply of anything. This meaning is rather rare. So I, I didn't really put it up here. But you can see the process of the word. Okay, it meant granary in Latin. And it became a general term for any sort of supply of anything that you've got. And then 
as it became used more and more as a verb, it developed a couple of meanings related to that. Uh, to start with, we've got to gather, collect, or hoard. Okay, just like all the people who are garnering toilet paper and other important supplies. Okay, gathering, bringing things together, collecting things. Hoard, you've seen that word or you've heard it a, a bunch over the past couple of weeks. That has a negative connotation. That means taking more than you need, taking too much and keeping it all to yourself, not sharing. All right, uh, hoard is a great word. Uh, and so garner can can have a, a bit of a negative connotation. You'll see here, it, it's generally neutral, but I have a little uh, uh, phrase here that people do not like to hear. Read the sentence with me. The court decided to garner his wages since he had refused to pay any of his fines willingly. Garnering wages. That is an important term for you to be aware of. Basically, that is when uh, the court system or your employer, you know, they, someone official talks to your employer and they take the money from your paycheck by force. So, you know, for example, this guy, whatever fines it, whatever he was supposed to pay, maybe an old parking ticket. If you ignore that, eventually the, the court's going to show up and say, well, if you're not going to pay us, we're going to take the money directly from your job. So before you get your paycheck, they already take the money out, kind of like the taxes. All right. So that's garnering wages. Good to know. Like I said, it's a bad thing. You don't want this to happen. But yeah, you can see the idea is that they are collecting the money uh, by force. <laughs> Now, a probably more common definition nowadays, again, the language keeps progressing. And so uh, this is a more recent development. And as such, it's, it's more common is the definition to earn. Um, so you can gather, you can collect by force, but earning is basically people giving you something important willingly. That's the difference. If you, you're gathering, you're doing the work. If you earn it, yes, you're, you're still doing the work. But first of all, it's always going to have that positive connotation. And more importantly, you people are happy to give you what you want, as opposed to garnering the wages. You're in trouble. They're mad. It's a bad situation, right? So I've got a couple examples in the sentence here. Despite having garnered the respect and support of millions, the politician dropped out, realizing it would be impossible to garner enough votes to win the election. Uh, this sentence, of course, in light of the very recent announcement that Bernie Sanders has dropped out um, of the uh, presidential race. All right. Garnered respect. Garner support. Garner votes. Nobody is, you're not taking these things. You have to earn these things. You have to work hard and make people want you um, to have them, that they want to give them to you, right? You can't force people to respect you. Uh, well, hmm. <laughs> let's not go there. But so that's the idea. You can garner a lot of things, you know, and these are very popular uh, ones. Garner attention. So like in the news, you, you garner attention. Uh, so different things like that. All right, practice time. I've got a writing assignment for you. Give me a sentence, give me a paragraph, whatever you'd like. What would the apex of your career look like? Would you prefer to garner lots of respect or lots of money? You can do one of these questions. You could do both, they're, they're kind of related. Or you can make any sentence that you would like with either of the words. Uh, but go have fun and see what you can do. In the meanwhile, I'll let you go. Thank you as always for watching. There's more videos at apexlanguages.com. Have a great, healthy, safe rest of your day.